Hi everyone! Thank you so much for joining in. We are talking about how to go plastic free July on a budget today. So I'm something that I'm super super stoked to be talking to you about. Um, thank you all for joining. I am Sarah Mansoor and I am logging in from Bangalore, India um, to share an Indian Asian perspective on how to go zero waste on a budget. Um, a topic that is of lots of interest. So thank you so much all for everyone for joining today. Uh, we're just going to wait for a few hot seconds while we wait to um, have bare necessities join in. Amazing. So, perfect. Hi. Hi, Tim. Thanks so much for joining. This is so exciting. I'm so excited to talk to you about all things plastic people related. Yeah, great to be on uh, online with you, Sahar. And thanks to Plastic Free July for allowing the takeover this afternoon, or this morning in Perth and this morning in Bangalore as well. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. Well, fantastic. Um, thanks, everyone, to join us. As I mentioned, it's a takeover of the Instagram channel. So we've got Sahar based in Bangalore, uh, founder of Bear Necessities on one side, and um, Tim, and I work with Sahar in Bangalore, and I'm currently based in Sydney in Australia. Um, so Sahar, can you just um, just delve into Plastic Free July for us um, about what it is to you and yeah, people in India? Definitely. So Plastic Free July, as many of us might already know, is this amazing global challenge started in 2011 in, uh, uh, by Rebecca, to just encourage people to you know, reduce their waste per consumption. So whether you want to say no to your plastic coffee cup in the morning, or if you want to pledge to go completely plastic free July in different, different aspects of your life, here's an opportunity to get you started. And this global movement has just kind of catapulted. And last year alone, there were about 300 million people who signed up um, to the plastic free July pledge. And we're so excited to kind of share an Indian perspective on how to go zero waste today with you. That's fantastic. Thanks, Sahar. So as we mentioned, the reason we're on is really to share those different perspectives today, different cultural insights, and most importantly, a lot of tips, tricks, and solutions that all of us can implement into our lives as well. So I hope everyone enjoys it. Feel free to add any questions um, along the way. We'll answer and we'll jump back into those questions later on as well. Um, so Sahar, just to give everyone a bit of insight, um, can you tell us about the waste landscape in India, what it's all about? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So in India, honestly, we have a huge way to go. Our waste infrastructure systems um, need to be way more kind of sophisticated. And what we currently do is we depend a lot on 1.5 to 4 billion people um, in the waste sector, sorry, million people in the waste collection space. So you might know them as uh, waste warriors, or you might know them as waste pickers or rag pickers. Um, I prefer to call them waste warriors, but essentially they do a lot of the heavy lifting. So they are the ones who kind of going through and sorting out all of our waste with often their bare kind of extremely, you know, naked hand with no kind of personal private protective equipment while they're sorting through broken glass, sanitary napkins to just try and get that high valuable PET plastic bottle, for example, or a cardboard that they might be able to recycle. Um, so we don't have a lot of bins that are completely already segregated. And of course, it really varies from city to city. But we're in a place where a lot of us in lots of developing countries depend largely on the informal workers, often who don't have maybe citizenship rights and are, you know, maybe sometimes don't even have access to health care, etc. Um, and they're really kind of those invisible hands that uh, make sure that X amount of waste is being recycled. So actually in India, 60% of our plastic is recycled. Uh, but of course, as we all know, worldwide, it's only about 9% of waste that actually gets recycled. That's a fantastic insight. And I know from my um, own experience over there, I was working in India for a couple of years, speaking to the people on the ground and learning their stories, sharing those as well is such an important part. And that's really what we're trying to do today for all the audience out there. I'm going to share a number of Sahir stories and also how she's actually related to people on the ground level, like those waste warriors you talked about. 
And we're going to be doing that in a bit of a step-by-step process. So uh, Sahara and I have um, just a little shout out to a book that we authored where we just go step-by-step stage about how to provide those solutions. So Sahara's got that there. Um, and what we're going to do today is provide a number of those solutions as well as ideas that Sahara's found and myself in workshops and talks that we've done throughout India that relate across Asia and also relate to people no matter where you are in the world because those solutions are really important to share the knowledge all around. So we're going to jump into a really intimate area to begin with. Um, so the personal care routine and the bathroom. So um, for everyone out there, so has some business fair necessities, really focuses on natural ingredients. So things like coconut oil and lots of natural um, fragrance, uh, fragrances and uh, things like turmeric as well, um, found in India. So, so hey, can you just uh, explain a little bit the importance of those to everyone out there? And also yeah, how that reduces plastic waste through the packaging. Yeah, totally. Honestly, when you think about kind of reducing your waste footprint or your plastic footprint, I think the easiest place to start is your personal care routine. And your kind of, your, because the restroom is one place where you have complete control over what you put on your body, right? Because a lot of us might have roommates, co-inhabitants, um, husbands, spouses, partners, whatever. Um, and it's not easy to kind of, you know, transition your entire kind of household to go plastic free overnight. But a great place to start, even on a budget, is your personal care routine. So of course, the first thing that you and I do when we wake up in the morning is brush our teeth. So switching to a compostable bamboo toothbrush, but also if you are in India and other developing countries, you can use a miswak stick, which is, um, or a neem stick. They're essentially twigs that are found from natural plants that you can get for less than 20 Australian cents or 20 Indian rupees. Um, and that is an amazing place to start where you can go completely uh, zero waste in your dental routine. And when you're done, you can just compost it. So it goes back to the earth um, just like that. And um, yeah, that's one quick little trip, uh, tick, trip in, um, tip in that regard. But in terms of just ingredients that we use, um, I think we celebrate a lot of native ingredients. And I think everyone all over the world can do that. Um, so, you know, for us, I'm South Indian. So coconut oil is something I go to to moisturize um, in my dental care routine because it massages your gums. But equally, you know, if you're uh, somewhere in the Middle East and you have access to olive oil, go for it. You know, use ingredients that are just native to you um, that might work for you. So we here we use a lot of um, lavender buds from north of uh, India, Kashmir. We use a lot of rose petals. Um, we use turmeric and cinnamon. Um, so a lot of kind of uh, spices that are used even in our personal care products that we make. Um, and that's kind of a, a great place to start um, in terms of your personal care routine. Amazing. And I think one of the important things for yourself as well with conversations we've had with the audience out there is that assessment of your waste, being able to see what you're actually generating, filling up a garbage bag, for instance, um, in the beginning stages before you move to things like the compostable uh, bamboo uh, toothbrushes, for instance, and really being able to see what resources there are around you. So for some people might be going to make your own toothpaste or tooth powder or different products like that or soaps like yourself, so here. Um, with the coconut oil, um, but for others, it's just finding those sto- um, zero waste stores around you as well. So it's fantastic. So now, just in terms, um, sorry, you continue. Yeah, definitely. Actually, good point. I kind of missed out about that. Tooth powders are also really amazing because you know they're derived from activated charcoal. You can use um, various citrus fruits like amla. Um, so all you need also is. You can have a toothpaste that you'd make with baking soda, coconut oil, and a be- you know, peppermint essential oils, or a pinch of cinnamon, which is totally a product that you can make on a budget. Um, you know, uh, we all use baking soda for baked ingredients. So that's also something that's native to your own kitchen. Um, so that's a good mix, again, that you can make with uh, products that are native to your kitchen. And one little kind of jar, about 190 ml, like this size jar, will last you about three months. Um, And that will be about 50 Indian rupees. So I'm guessing about 50 Australian uh, cents is what we're working with. 
Well, that's great. And a lot of your other solutions, things like your neem brush, for instance, are really things that you can have there and have that long-term sustainability using natural ingredients as well. So for everyone uh, listening out there, make sure to jump on plasticfreejuly.org to take up the challenge using some of these ideas that the hair was sharing. And also, in just a few moments as well, we're going to be doing another DIY. So Sahir just explained a little bit about the Peppermint Party toothpaste that she um, has a ban of but in you know, a uh, few moments, we'll be going through one more DIY for you as well. And a hands-on exercise for Sahir over there in Bangalore. Um, just to, uh, looking at a different perspective as well, so uh, just moving on, so our closet and our fashion choices, um, you've got a really a strong passion within your business about supporting workers from low socio socioeconomic areas, what that does when you've got uh, large external shocks, so things like um, COVID, which we've had at the moment, ongoing, how we're actually supporting that and how we're trying to reduce the plastic use through supply chains by using the resources that we've actually got at hand. Do you just be able to explain a little bit about how you work with your business, how you reduce um, the waste there and what people can actually do using those lessons in their own personal lives. Yeah, d definitely. A great question, Tim. Um, I think we communicate so much of who we are through our clothing and it's so important to make that choice an ethical one. Um, you know, a lot of the uh, nylons, um, the spandexes, all of them have lots of little, little small pieces of plastic which are not you know visible to our naked eye and those kind of microplastics is what kind of is washed into the waterways every time we do a load of laundry so um, a great way to be just more mindful about our closet is kind of advocating for more slow fashion choices which is basically you know as the word suggests kind of the opposite of fast fashion um, and so fashion often kind of advocates for transparency. So who made my clothes? How much are they getting paid? Where are we sourcing? What raw materials from? What material um, is my clothing is actually made out of? And then um, traceability and accountability kind of go hand in hand because what you are articulating outside to the external world and consumers is how you are embedding transparency, right? And I think in India, we have a lot of amazing artisans. So for example, the second most important sector in terms of employment in India is the artisan area. So farmers being the first, but then is all of the people who are making, weaving your clothes, hand dyeing your clothes, using you know natural dyes, using um, block printing, um, and various amazing forms of art. And I think India has so much to celebrate like lots of other um, you know, developing countries where each state has its own kind of art form in the form of textile uh, work. So uh, whether that is a bandhani and ikat, whether that's like a very fine kind of tie dye that's seen in you know Gujarat, or whether that is hand spun cloth, which is kind of um, inspired iconically by Gandhi, which is kind of spinning on the chakra to kind of weave each piece of cloth. Um, one way to just be more mindful about money and budget when you look at your closet is you can have a clothes swap, you know, I think um, a lot of us grow out of clothes. Um, it's also fun to just have like a freshness of perspective on your clothes. So actually, I'm the younger sister. I have two older sisters um, and I've basically, you know, embraced hand-me-downs my entire life. But that's fun activity that maybe you can do with your colleagues or your sisters, your siblings. Um, just even in your neighborhood, if you, you know, pick a day and then everyone kind of post three, four photos of what they uh, are looking to get rid of. Um, and want to swap. I think that's a great way to be mindful of kind of new clothing, but also on a budget. Um, and another thing that you can do is just get creative with your clothes that you already have, uh, whether that is, you know, cutting them and upcycling them or stitching them into something else. Um, here is an old t-shirt that I no more fit into that I just cut up and made a little tote bag out of. Um, so as you can it's see, solution for it. yeah, so that's a quick little <laughs> nifty, uh, you know, hack if you want to also just repurpose and kind of get innovative um, and creative, like a fun weekend project with um, your niece, your nephew, um, or yourself even. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great way to really reflect, to uh, understand a lot of the traditional ways and traditional um resources that you had at hand. So things like um, saris, for instance, can really be reflected in terms of how you're actually going out there and choosing 
to buy ethical clothes, which then doesn't add, add to the packaging amounts, also reduces the overall waste and can really probably improve the quality of garments and improve the quality of livelihoods for people within those supply chains. That's uh, fantastic advice and really things to keep, keep in mind about Plastic Free on a Budget, I think. Um, just yeah. so anyone that's... Oh, sorry, you continue. I was just going to say that we're doing this Instagram takeover on Plastic Free July. Um, just to anyone that just joined, but jump away to here, please. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Dan. Um, I think that's actually a really good example that, again, I missed out. But um, an example, for example, in India, we have this one piece of cloth, which is, uh, you know, seven to nine yards. And it's called a sari, and you can kind of drape it in so many different styles. Um, and you literally can wear it through all phases of your life, right? Um, whether you are a 14-year-old or you are an 80-year-old um, or whether you are pregnant or not. So as your body kind of changes in height and shape and size, the sari is a kind of a gorgeous piece of cloth that kind of evolves and grows with you versus uh, perhaps, you know, a pair of jeans that you grow out of so quickly and then you need more. Um, so I think that's something I've also seen a lot in um, you know, native Asian cultures um, where there is kind of traditional clothing that kind of grows with you and you can kind of drape in different ways. Um, and that's really another good example that you uh, pointed out rightly. That's a really great communal idea. And to speak about moving into communal areas, we're doing a step-by-step -step process of finding solutions in each stage. So we're going to start looking at kitchen. And if possible, so, and see quite a lot of products behind you and things possibly like your tip and box of straws that you might use within a kitchen as well. To be able to provide a few of those kind of really physical items around you just to show everyone around to highlight what you've got there in India and what we can use as resources to reduce waste in the kitchen. Sure, definitely. Um, I think, you know, this is a little stainless steel tip-in, which is something that is... Um, started in 18th century India, which is a combination of this gorgeous equipment that you see, but also um, it's three tire, you might get four tire, things like that. Um, so it's a combination of equipment, um, food that comes in these, and also a supply chain system. So actually every day, about 7,000 um, dabba walas, as we call them, or tiffin walas, actually deliver amazing, healthy, home-cooked meals to about 2 lakh or 2 million uh, people in one city alone. And I think that's such an amazing example of what plastic-free living could look like, but also has a very communal aspect in terms of creating amazing green jobs and creating employment opportunities, but also, um, you know, food on a budget. This is food from your own home that you're cooking, but just getting delivered to you hot and fresh. So, for example, in, um, in India, often it is small business owners that are kind of sending this food to you. Sometimes it's your mom um, or your parents, um, but also it is a great way of supporting local economy and having healthy, amazing home cooked food on a budget. Um, because instead of kind of going out, you know, for every meal at work or, or whatever university, this is kind of a great alternative, which is also plastic free, which is amazing. And it's kind of the antithesis of the kind of food delivery startups that have emerged that have, a lot of single-use plastic associated with it. So yeah, here's my favorite kind of example. Um, we also have these amazing food wax wraps uh, that come in different sizes and shapes that you can pack a sandwich in, you can pack um, you know, half a fruit or apple, um, and it just gorgeously takes the shape of um, anything that you kind of want to uh, wrap in. So, they're quite similar right to a lot of the like, banana leaf wraps as well across Southeast Asia too. So um, the kind of novelties in terms of finding those solutions that are actually around, which is really great, and then making that mainstream. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And in, actually in India, in all of our South Indian weddings, we still eat on banana leaves. And that's something that's very much still native to our culture, and we do it all the time. So um, weddings, you know, you might think that there'll be like lots of fancy stuff, um, you know, but it's often very, very plastic free. We have lots of local plants, lots of local palms and leaves. Um, and often a lot of the flowers that we use in our Indian kind of festivals, um, weddings, etc. The waste flowers often get kind of dried and used to make natural instances or even natural colors. 
um, for Holi, which is like this really fun festival of color. Um, so whether that is, you know, using old dried rose petals or rose um, beetroot powder, uh, you know, turmeric powder. So we use a lot of those old marigold flowers, for example, into making these gorgeous natural dyes for clothing, but also for festivities, um, which is also a really fun part of our culture. I think one of the other things that re that really applies to highlights as well is using things from root to stem. So using the whole products and how much that can actually save for a budget perspective, because you're actually using the entire vegetable or entire fruit. But then also how much packaging you're actually going to be saving if you're buying that in bulk. So you're actually going to be able to go with your own carry-on bags, like the one you showed a little bit earlier, purchase a whole amount, use that and feed the whole family reduce waste and then do things like composting as well that can add nutrients to your garden, have a better way of living, feeling um, far better from a mental health perspective because you're getting to go out and escape into that kind of garden environment. And then also on top of that, then you're not needing to go and buy extra fertilizer from a shop because you've already got something there to actually fertilize. So thinking about that entire circular process is really important. We're thinking about how to reduce plastic waste as a whole with those really simple um, solutions as well. So I don't know whether now is a good time for us to jump into that DIY that you're going to show sure. us. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, so give me a minute while I move things over. So what you'll need is a big bowl. If you're doing this with me, you need a big bowl or you need um, old kind of so what is the bowl DIY bowl. Bowl, so Sorry. Sorry? What are we making today? We haven't. Oh, yes, yes, great question. Okay, so we're making a multi-surface um, purpose cleaner. So you can use this as a cleaning agent to wipe down your countertops, your tables, um, your windows, your floors, even your toilet bowls and sinks. So this is a super versatile multi-surface cleaner that you can make with waste orange peels from your own kitchen. So this is, um, you know, two dollar or less um, recipe um, and about maybe 100 Indian rupees recipe that I'd love to kind of share with you. And you need only a few things. You need um, orange peels or lemon peels, any kind of citric peels from your kitchen. Um, you, you need that in about 300 grams. You need about 100 grams of um, jaggery, which is also um, you can use brown sugar if that's what's most accessible in um, Australia. So brown sugar or jaggery if you're in Asia. And then you need a container. So I, I, you can use a container that has like a bunch of these um, little measuring things as well. That makes it quite easy. Uh, so if you have like a BPA-free plastic bottle that you want to upcycle in some way, this is a great way to do it. Um, this is largely because what we're making is a fermentation. So the kind of aeration of the gases will cause kind of an expansion of the bottle. So if you use glass, it could sometimes crack a little. So you need to use a nice, very sturdy thick glass bottle or a thick mason jar, or you can use a plastic that is um, kind of expands that you might already have in your kitchen. Amazing. So now we're going to make our own bioenzymes. I'm taking about one liter of water. Okay. Um, so one liter of water. I'm going to add 300 grams of orange peel. So if you can see, I'm going to add about 300 grams of orange peel into this. A great way to prop it. Perfect. Okay. So 300 grams of orange peel. Then. And then you're going to add 100 grams of jaggery or brown sugar. I talked about earlier. So that's what I'm adding now. And you can see it kind of quickly, slowly go down and dissolve. It's amazing to see the process go um, straight away. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then now you just kind of give it all a good mix. And that's about it. You basically let it sit. 
Um, if you have yeast from making bread, if you add a pinch of yeast, you're expediting the process of fermentation, which is great. So you can use this batch a little earlier. If you don't, that's okay. You can just use this in three months. You just need to kind of strain the peel and then use the liquid. I also usually take a little marker and write kind of when I made the batch. So I remember. So the last time I made this batch was June 12th. Um, so, you know, you could kind of take this down and then add a new date of when you did actually make it. Um, another thing to remember with this liquid is you need to basically make sure to let it breathe or burp every day because like I said, it is a process of fermentation. So um, it needs to be aerated. And so I have this perfect little clasp on top that I just kind of open out for a few seconds every day. Um, so yeah, this is what we need to do in order to let the gases release. So make sure you're burping your bioenzymes. Um, and this is honestly so, so nice to use um, for everything. You can literally use it for um, cleaning your dishes. You can use it to wipe down your countertops. You can just put some in your sink and let it sit for about 15 minutes and then wash it out. And it just smells really nice and citrusy and lemony. Um, and it's really good. So yeah, this is a great little DIY that you can do for under two dollars or two hundred rupees if you're in India. It's an amazing solution. So we're really working our way that step-by-step -step process of finding those budgeting tips and tricks to reduce your plastic throughout the home. Uh, I know you've got a few other things there in your office that might show a few of those kind of gifting ideas. Like, for instance, if you really wanted to give the, um, a bioenzyme cleaner, then that's there. But then also <laughs> gifting those kind of experiences to reduce plastic and different ways to actually do that. Would you be able to share a couple of those? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, sure, definitely. Honestly, I think the favorite gift I've gotten is uh, my friend giving me um, this little, you know, uh, a, it's like a scuba diving kind of adventure. So I think a lot of the things that you remember most are perhaps not the stuff that you accumulate. Um, and I think what Plastic Free Living is just kind of advocating for is kind of a shift in values. Um, one that is a little bit more mindful of kind of experiences rather than kind of accumulating stuff. Um, so yeah, here is one way to kind of wrap a gift. This is a book um, that I've wrapped in the kind of Japanese inspired um, um, gift wrapping method. So that's one. You know, you could also kind of gift things like a picnic in the park for mom, um, you know, or for Mother's Day or whatever. So I think that's also a really great way to experience the outdoors, or tell someone you love them by kind of acts of you know, thoughtful acts that you kind of do, um, whether that is baking or, um, you know, experiencing things outdoors, whether that's going on a morning hike um, or a picnic in the park. I think those are kind of great ways um, to go zero waste. I think also just supporting econ local economy um, and buying kind of toys that are native to your culture. Um, I know in India, we have lots of kind of great Chanabana toys. I'm actually gonna quickly just show you as well. Um, let me grab them. So this is a really cute little Channa Patna toy. It's a little cat. And this is, of course, Frida Kahlo, um, which are great kind of toys that you can get for people and kids that have paints that are completely natural um, and made out of kind of dyes and moringa powder and neem powder rather than kind of synthetic coloring agents. So I think that's another really good one. Um, I think giving plants, um, gifting seeds rather than bouquets that are packaged in a bunch of plastic is another great alternative. Um, I have a bunch of camping friends that I, you know, love the outdoors. So giving them a little kit that they can take with them when they go camping is another great kind of tip um, and a thoughtful gift that they could perhaps use when they're camping. Uh, speaking of camping, I love this little hack. Um, this little tumbler is super cute and you can basically just kind of collapse it and hang it to your backpack or um, anything, you know, your pocket, whatever. Um, and it's a great way for your tea, coffee, um, juices kind of on the way or like a great kind of camping um, little accessory as well. Um, so yeah, I think just 
being more mindful and thoughtful about your gifting choices and articulating your values um, through your gifting is a great way to go plastic free uh, but also do things on a budget that show someone how much you love them rather than make a cake rather than buy one is another few tips that i have that's amazing to hear and i think one of the reasons why we wanted to discuss that in this kind of process is to and the importance of the sharing knowledge and those questions which you're doing as well so in the last section that we're doing during this uh plastic free july takeover on instagram is i'm going to take everyone's questions just after uh well two more things i'm going to ask is to hear number one for everyone that's probably curious i'm sure it's down there in the question box the products and the big refill jars that you've got behind there um, would you be able to explain a little bit about them and then also provide a few more of those sort of Indian specific tips and tricks to reduce waste in the budget just before I jump into a couple of questions? Yeah, definitely. So we have a refill station here in Bangalore. Uh, so people can come and bring your own jars and refill as much as you need. So it's honestly very, very democratic. Um, you know, you're not giving you kind of pre-dictated amount of packaged XYZ product. So we have a activated charcoal tooth powder. We have this gorgeous golden hour liquid uh, soap that you can use to wash your hands, but even your body. And then we've got this gorgeous lavender laundry detergent that's super mild and young moms love it um, to kind of wash their ingredients. Um, we have a bunch of other tooth powders and kind of laundry um, agents, but also dishwashing agents, um, makeup cleansers that you can buy. And I think the refill economy is something that really excites me. And um, of course, number one, it's plastic free. But two, I think it's kind of advocating for how we can do things in a cleaner, greener, more just way. And I think it's a huge sign to big corporates about how we can kind of change and rethink the way we're kind of consuming. Um, and it's also a great way to get people in here. Um, it's very communal, um, you know, to measure as much as you want, to spear these little discussions about living plastic free sharing little recipes um, like i see lots of people are sharing amazing recipes on the comments throughout this chat which has been really great um so i think you know that's another way that also just kind of fosters a great sense of community around living zero waste or plastic free uh, which is also something that really is important and awesome yeah, and what, one of the reasons I wanted to kind of ask about those as well was because if you're not there in Bangalore, so I've noticed people from as far away as Trinidad and Tobago when they first joined, so miles away from um, India, <laughs> where you're getting these ideas from yourself or from the Plastic Free July website and taking up the Plastic Free July challenge this month is you can go and find businesses like that or you can go and create that sharing economy around you and your location as well using natural and local ingredients and also it's kind of really traditional solutions with they using those resources from yesterday and those lessons from past years with new innovations today and looking at those new ways to package things for instance or the collapsible cup as well so just quite a number of different things were there any questions you want to jump into there, there are so many great questions honestly um uh i, I someone asked a little bit about makeup routines um, so, you know, someone was asking about how to kind of cleanse your face with makeup. This is a great kind of alternative, again, on a budget. You can make this yourself. You can knit it or crochet it, or you can buy it from a local business that you love. And this is a great way to kind of take off all of your makeup. Um, you just need to, you know, dip it in a little bit of coconut oil or rose water or both. Um, and then when you're done, you can literally cut it out and pop it into the compost and it'll just go back to the earth. Um, someone also asked about um, more sustainable gifting tips and kind of how do small businesses like ourselves ship out these products in a way that's sustainable or zero waste. Um, so I want to quickly share about this tape and it is a paper tape uh, with natural kind of adhesives to kind of stick. So this is another great alternative um, to pack those gorgeous plastic free gifts that you're getting for people but also if you're a small business looking to go green uh, here's an alternative that Ben Sespies has if you have any questions DM us and I can kind of um, share some details about that um, we have questions about uh, finding alternatives to food packaged in wraps, for instance, say a biscuit packet as well. So I think that what we were speaking about earlier about trying to make your own, whether that's uh, cake recipes or your biscuits, but if you don't have those kind of options, looking about what kind of stores around you that may be able to provide that to you in a reusable container that you take in. And then something Sahir mentioned a little bit earlier as well, which is writing to companies to say, hey, can you go and find sustainable alternatives to the big, big conglomerates and change their actual packaging methods too um, if you don't have time to actually go 
make your own, for instance, along with doing things like root to stem cooking. Um, so using all the resources that we spoke about. So a number of other great solutions there for everyone looking to find baking solutions. Yeah, definitely. Um, there are so many amazing questions. Uh, I wanted to share, of course, I think everyone knows about like plastic uh, free straws, which is kind of stainless steel straws. Um, we also have these stick, these, these uh, straws that are made out of coconut leaves that are kind of rolled up uh, that you can use um, out of old dry coconut leaves. And then we have this other kind of innovation, which is um, straws that are made out of millets and they are edible straws. Um, that you can eat, so you can drink, you can sip, you can munch, um, and they come in flavors of cinnamon and chocolate, which are kind of quite popular with kids to kind of get them excited about sustainability at a really young age. Um, lots of people are asking amazing questions about zero waste packaging, um, you know, alternatives to bubble wrap and whatnot. Uh, so I think, you know, feel free to DM us and I can kind of share some ideas with you. This is kind of an alternative to bubble wrap. If you're a small business owner, you can kind of wrap your um, products in this. They come in a big roll, uh, but they're called kind of beehive paper. Um, so that's a great alternative to bubble wrap. Um, I hear lots of love from um, Zero Waste Japan, Zero Waste Singapore, the people from Trinidad and uh, Tobago. This is um, such an amazing, cool community of lots of people from all over the world that have logged in. Um, and yeah, so thanks so much for sharing. Um, I think, you know, a lot of the tips and tricks and recipes that we mentioned are in the book. So feel free to like check it out, especially if you're in the Asian context. Um, there are, you know, lots of ingredients that are might native to this part of the world um, as well. So feel free to check it out. Um, yeah. In terms of zero waste cooking, um, you know, uh, the root to stem cooking, I think the, the game changer in my kitchen cooking was being able to use the florets of the broccoli. I would usually just kind of chop out the tree of the broccoli and kind of um, throw out the stem, but using that stem uh, and cutting it and kind of putting it in salads, baking it in a baked tray um, has been kind of really game changing for me. Using all of the food scraps to make a nice little broth um, and then kind of using that same water to make any curry or just like a soup or any, any of that um, is also really fun little zero waste uh, kitchen tips that I've kind of figured out that are really good on the pocket as well. It's fantastic how simple some of these ideas are, but then also she said really, really good on the pocket. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Great. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to DM us on Bare Necessities, uh, Zero Waste India. We'd be happy to answer them. Um, thank you so much, Tim, for all of the great, thoughtful questions. Thank you for all your time spent in Asia understanding um, the waste context here and excited to see all the work that you're doing um, back in Australia and Sydney. Um, big shout out to Rebecca and Jess from the Plastic Free July team um, for wanting to have kind of a more inclusive conversation around waste and plastic free living um, that goes beyond geography. Appreciate that. Have a great weekend, everyone. Um, take the Plastic Free Pledge if you haven't already. You can sign up on plasticfreejuly.org. Um, whether it is something that you want to do on a daily level, weekly level. And they say that most people actually start with this Plastic Free July Pledge and then make it a lifestyle. Um, so I'm excited to see what impact Plastic Free July is going to have in your life. Uh, so, you know, do share, uh, send your stories, and take photos, tag us. Um, and we are excited to kind of see everyone on this amazing zero waste journey. All right. Thanks so much. Take care, everyone. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye-bye.